So just a quick little demo on working with frames and how to adjust your speed by dragging frames away from each other and so on and so forth. And then we'll do another one real quickly too. But so I've got this runner that I built with you guys and it's, you know, I mean, it's not drawn very well, but the motion's there. And let's say I wanted to slow the run down. Okay, he's running too fast. And he's not running too fast left to right, but the motions are too fast. So when you're working with frame by frame stuff, there's a couple of things to kind of keep in mind as you're, as you're going through. And this is just kind of a general how to use frames, okay? Um, if I double click inside the symbol, you'll see the, the keyframes that are here and you'll notice there's no space between them whatsoever. They are identical. Um, you can adjust your frames on the timeline, or at least the size of the frames, by the way, with this little menu right here. And you can make them small, medium, large, tiny, whatever. And so here it can actually help you. Um, you see them a little bit closer. I find that medium is usually about what I want to do. One of the things that you can do is you can click on a frame and then you can drag it. And you can see how the cursor kind of changes when you get over on top of there. And when I drag it, Notice that the keyframe before it actually gets a little longer. So what I can do, and I like to do it this way, is I like to go front to back because it just seems to be a little easier to me. It doesn't really matter, but you have to select them all and move them uh, and then just keep going like, well, I'll show you because it's just one of those things that's really hard to describe. So in order to select a whole group of, of uh, frames, you want to click off of the frames first and make sure no frames are selected. Then you click with the mouse and you drag. And that's really important. You don't, I, I don't even know, I click and shift. Yeah, so you can also click the first one, then hold the shift key down and click on the last one and it will select all of them in between. Or you could control click and you can select individuals. But if you did this and started moving things around, that would really mess things up. So you want to be really careful what you do. So I just click and drag, okay? And then I'm going to move it over one frame, boom. Now the first keyframe has now become two frames long and we just continue doing that, so on and so forth. And therefore what I've done is I've now doubled, well actually halved, the speed of my animated character. Now again, I've not halved his speed across the screen because that's controlled by the motion tween that I put on the symbol. But inside this, this symbol here, when I've got this frame by frame running animation, I can control that speed by dragging these keyframes out. And so now a run cycle that used to take, I don't know, what was it like? Now, I just did something there because I, I was talking and I wasn't thinking, I was trying to do the math in my head about how, how, uh, how much it was because it's going to be uh, it's going to be 23 frames long, so it was like 11, okay, um, or 12, it's, yeah. So <clears throat> one of the things that I did here is um, I clicked and held like this. When you're selecting keyframes, you have to let go. You have to select, then, uh, you know, stop clicking or lift up the mouse button, and then you can select it and drag it. And then the other thing is this, and this is a really big thing, uh, mistake that I could make right here is it was 12 frames long and and if I stop right now this last frame is actually going to be shorter than all the others and so he might stutter a little bit so I'm just going to right click and I'm going to say insert frame and what that'll do is that'll insert an empty space with the same frame so now my running animation is going to take a little longer and let's see how that matches his um, the speed that he is going across the screen. That works a little better. He looks like he's kind of loping now. One of the things that you might want to be careful about though is he's starting to look a little less smooth, right? And the reason for that is because if I go into the symbol again, okay, there's a frame gap where he doesn't move. And so really what I should be doing here, okay, see if I can insert a keyframe there. I should be erasing him, turning on onion skinning, 
Okay. And looking at the frame before and after and doing a frame in between. That's what I should really be doing. So, you know, that's and, and, and do that for each step where I would go in, insert a keyframe, and then delete what's on that keyframe because it just duplicates the keyframe before it. And then you draw a new frame that's somewhere in between the two to create really smooth motion. Um, and if you do that, you'll be very happy with the results because you do really want, when you're doing frame by frame like this, you do not want a gap. You do not want a gap in between frames, keyframes. You want a keyframe every frame, okay? Now, is it passable? Yeah, it's passable, okay? It, it is passable, and it, it does work. So if you don't have time, then I, I, you know, I guess you can wait until later to do it. But it, it would look so much smoother if I were to go in and do more keyframes, okay? So that's important. And it's, it's a good thing because it's also an evaluation of um, time. Once you start stretching keyframes out, oh, how's the time look? Oh, is it too slow? Is it too jerky? Like that sort of stuff. Those are, those are important evaluations to make uh, in there. Okay, does that, does that make sense to everybody? Okay.